When I shoot time lapses like the ones you just saw, I use the interval shooting function on my camera. It works by taking a picture every two seconds. I turn those pictures into a time lapse video by importing them into my video editor. The problem is selecting which pictures to use. On the camera SD card, all pictures just end up in a big folder, and there's no information available that reveals if a certain picture is part of an interval shooting sequence or not. At first, I looked at thumbnails to determine where a certain picture sequence started and ended. But thumbnails take a while to load and it's a tedious manual process. So to simplify this, I wrote a script that finds all pictures on the SD card that were cl taken close in time to each other. So a couple of seconds apart, maximum. And I copy all those pictures to a specific folder. And those are the pictures for the time lapse. I wrote the script hastily just to get it working. In this video, I want to show you how I refactor it to make it more readable and clean. And in the process you will also learn how the script works. So let's jump into the editor and begin. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, here we have the extract time lapses script and I've also prepared uh, samples. So I thought we could write a test to begin with uh, to see that uh, these are actually extracted uh, correctly when the script is run. So let's write a script uh, test.sh that calls extract time lapses to somewhere to a folder called new. So let's make sure that uh, it doesn't exist. Uh, let's call it test folder. that uh, and also extract time lapses will now uh, look for stuff in this directory so let's for the moment do this and then do samples for now, uh, let's just see if that works. So, extract time lapses. Let's try it. Uh, I didn't say this one. Happened so only in test folder. Okay, so test folder looks correct. Uh, do something a little slash there. What am I missing? Only samples. So the, isn't that? What am I missing? Samples. 
request folder. Zero one zero. So looks like it worked. Only sample zero. Seventy seven. Oh, so it's taking them in the wrong order. <laughs> Let's see. Um, so we have 55, 77, and in the old one, we have. Okay, so we should switch those around. So sample zero, samples two, say, samples one, sample zero, two, two samples one, and then yay. Okay, so now we have a test script that we can run uh, to verify that the, our factorings still work. Let's dive into the script. Uh, what do I want to start with? Um, so if I'm reading this, uh, there's like a global variable and the function that does some code and so maybe I want to start with like a proper main function. So if then let's call main, whatever main is. And let's uh, make uh, this main function. That'll probably not work because this images uh, it's only using one function, yeah, so we can copy it in here. Okay, let's verify that that works. Works. And then this dir is the source directory, so let's pass that as an argument. Source directory. Uh, and we can move these down. Let's say something like this to make it even more clear. Samples. Let's see if that works. Works. Uh, so this is the place uh, where my SD card is mounted. So that should probably be the default later on, but we'll keep samples now to so that the test script um, uh, works. Okay, so now we have two functions here. We have the main function, uh, which takes one argument and uh, it probably writes images to somewhere. Copy file, target directory, base there. So the base there is the first uh, argument passed into the script. So let's extract that. Um, let's move it up here. Let's say source directory and target base directory. Uh, so down here we should call it uh, target base directory and we insert this here say target base directory equals that. Okay, let's see if that works. Works. 
Let's do some formatting. And the main, there's no need to call this main, so uh, let's instead call it extract time lapses. And make sure it works. It does. So then we have two functions. Let's move that to the top and move the other function down here. Still works, yes. What do we have next? Uh, so this part right here is walking the source directory, looking for JPEG files and appends image information to this list. And we append the name, the path, and the timestamp. And the timestamp comes from. Okay, so let's extract that to a function. Let's call it uh, find uh, JPEG files in the source directory. There, return images, and here we're just using it once, so let's call it and say uh, find JPEG files in the source directory. See if that works. Yes, it does, and then let's move it down below. And we can probably write. Oh, let's see. I was thinking we can write this as a generator and instead, although I've had some problems with generators in the past, so I prefer to make explicit list. But in this case, we're only looping over them once. So it should be okay. So let's try to make a generator instead. Oh, but we want to sort here, so we can't use the generator. Okay. Okay, what's next? Time lapses. So, for image in JPEG files. So, time lapses is a list of uh, lists where each item in the time-lapse is a list of images with a specific time-lapse. So uh, maybe we can call this um, find time-lapses in the source directory. And it's this part. Uh, Lapses. Find time lapses and source directly. Let's see if that works. Works. Okay, so extract time lapses from source directory to a target base directory. So a time lapse here. It's more like an image sequence. So let's call it uh, that. Let's call it uh, picture sequence. And this is really uh, find picture sequences. So it works works. Uh, so the target 
directory word. And this is really extract picture sequence. Yeah, so let's extract picture sequence and let's say target directory is that and do, 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 and we have picture sequence. Let's try to extract a function for that. So it should be this one. Uh, extract picture sequence and target there. And sequence. So make there's target there for imaging sequence copy file path target their name do, 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 target their let's try that still works so let's see if we can do some Better naming here, extract picture sequence target uh, uh, directory. Uh, and this is not really extract time lapse as it's more like extract picture C. So extract picture sequence source directory to a target base directory. Uh, enumerate find picture sequence in source directory. Extract picture sequence target directory. Join with it target base directory and the index so that's what generates the zero and the one and extract picture sequence find picture sequence so i think top two are okay now um, this copy file was not uh, copying file attributes so dates were a bit off i might want to fix that uh, so Let's say to do copy file attributes as well. Uh, okay, so find picture sequences. So here, here is the, let's see, relevant comparison. So, Find JPEG files returns sorted images, sorted by timestamp. Uh, so this line right here compares to images. So I want to extract that and say something like uh, picture, uh, pictures part of say C ones and uh, let's call them left right and it should be something like this um, image uh, is the right time lapse is minus mine minus one is the left so here, if the timestamp between the right and the left image is less than four seconds, Let's see if that works. And 
and pictures part of the same sequence. So the left is this one. And the right is this one. And let's just see how much we should remove. Too many. Let's try that. Still works. So then we append that image uh, to the last time lapse file, and this should really be. Let's re rename that to picture sequences. So the first check here, if picture sequences, so if we have found any image and that first image compared to this image, uh, if they are part of the same sequence, then we append that image to the last sequence. Otherwise we append a new sequence with just that image, okay. And I might uh, want to increase this one a bit. Normally I shoot time lapses with uh, two seconds apart, but I might uh, shoot longer. And yeah. And I noticed that the diff in the exif data was actually um, was actually a bit more than two seconds, like three seconds sometimes, when in a two second image sequence. So let's do it uh, and equals as well. So we allow a five second difference. So not really a refactoring, a slight change, but a change I want to make. Images here. Yeah, well, let's call it pictures. Just to be consistent, an image. Okay, let's see for picture. Picture. Let's see if that really work. Yes, it did. Let's read this once again from top to bottom. So we extract picture sequences from the source directory samples, or yeah, my SD card directory, and the target base directory is given on the command line to the script. Okay. Extract picture sequences, index picture sequence, and find picture sequences in the source directory. Extract picture sequence target to the target directory. Makes sense to have this one first, I think. Uh, extract this picture sequence to this target directory. Where is the ba base directory? Um, plus the index. Extract picture sequence. Let's do it like that just for clarity. Make there's the target directory copy file. So I'm sure there's another method here on copy uh, that we can use. Let's see. So let's just try copy. Is that a copy file? It works. And also sample zero. We have 
and then test zero. So it's not copying attributes. Okay. Oh, copy two. Copy two. So that works and And now the metadata or the file metadata data is copied as well. Nice. So again, not uh, a refactoring, but something I want to change. Okay, so find picture sequences. So here I would like to make another change as well. And that is to exclude picture sequences with very few pictures. So the SD card, the camera SD card might not only contain um, uh, time-lapse photos, it might just contain other photos as well. Um, want to exclude those so we can do something like return uh, x for x in picture sequences if len x is larger than say 10. Let's see if that works to begin with. Oh, so probably in <laughs> my sample folder just ha has exactly 10, so let's do that instead. So it works. So these constants I would like to extract and call picture sequence and mean number. Oh, that's a really bad name. Let's uh, fix that layer. Picture sequence mean number and also this five seconds. Let's uh, move that. Where was it? Seconds five. Foo. Let's see if it works. Then we can do a rename, and this is um, max uh, seconds diff. Between. Ah, let's just call it that. What's a better name for this one? Um, picture sequence main number. sequence limit limit uh, uh, number of pictures uh, considered a sequence how about that Ah, 
that's a long name. Number of pictures considered a sequence. Yeah, well, I'm pretty happy with that. Reads quite okay. Okay, so let's read it top to bottom again. So number of pictures considered a sequence 10. So there needs to be at least 10 consecutive images for it to be considered a sequence and be extracted as a time lapse. Uh, max seconds diff. So the diff between two consecutive images cannot be larger than five seconds. Extract picture sequences, extract picture sequence. And picture sequences. I'm sure there's more to be done to this to make it more clear, but I'm quite happy at this point. Also, something to note is that this read exif timestamp, I use the exif read library. Uh, this external library just to read exif data from JPEG files. Um, I'm just using a very small portion of this library, I guess, just to read the date field um, of the exif tag. So it would be interesting to see how much code would be required just to read that date field without a library, like to parse the exif data. Uh, from scratch. So that would make this script uh, depend less on third party libraries and be more self sufficient. But I think that'll be it for this uh, refactoring session. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in one week. Bye.